Um, so, um, and I did explain that we took out the flying of the U.S. flag at half staff, just in case anybody had concerns about that. Mm. So, okay. Do we say half staff or half mast? I've always half said half, half mast. Half staff. Oh. Oh, oh I should change that in my floor report. <laughs> I've always said that. it wrong. <laughs> All right, committee. Can we look at our two compositions of our two boards? I think that's where we are. Am I right about that? Yes. So um, which would, what's your preference? Which would you rather tackle first here? Let's Any? do a pick. Okay. We had agreed to be pick. I don't know why I thought we no. would be pick. I have a lot of notes and a lot of iterations. So I don't think we had agreed to it. So the way it is in the bill is one for v -Sir, one v -Sirs, one Muni, two Governor, one Treasure, DFR, VLCT, and Vermont School Boards Association. That's the way it is in the bill. Mm -hmm. And we've had some iterations of that. So, does, so um, I will say for my part that for the VPIC board, I am happy with the way it is constructed now. I think that it's an investment board. And um, as we noted earlier, everybody should be concerned with getting the best investments, the best returns possible. And when I look at this, it looks like there are three, three kind of areas here. There's the <clears throat> participants, the kind of the union people, the, uh, employers, and then the kind of other taxpayer type people, the public. And we have three union or participant members, two employer members, um, and three, what I would consider kind of the public taxpayer members, that's the two governors and the um, uh, DFR, I guess I put there. Okay. And then the treasurer um, yeah. I put separately. But that's anyway, that's uh, depending on how you look at it. So I'd like committee discussion where everybody else is. And I'll just, that's where I am. So, Senator Collimore. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, as I counted up, there are 10 members, but nine voters. Yes, because the um, chair doesn't vote except for the time. chair doesn't vote yep. except in a tie. And this is the way it came over from the other body. And I think, as I said, it seems like a week ago now, maybe it's less. Uh, I support the way it came over from the other body. Hey, Senator Rahm. So um, I think that if we believe that the governor, you know, is has you know their person or their perspective represented with one financial expert, and we don't believe that they're going to have people who sort of disagree on their financial positions. I'm sorry, my dog is just really whiny today again because it's four forty. Um, I think that having their DFR commissioner and one appointee is sufficient, and what that does is move it back to eight voting members, which, you know, first of all, brings down the number, which I heard was less is more on this front. And um, I rather started to like the idea that there was a little bit of friction, that it was rare that you'd get a, um, a kind of split vote, that there's often consensus that happens. But, you know, should, should there be the need to, to really, ha you know, hash something out, you'd have four and four with the chair being a tie-breaking vote. So I, I would move to remove one of the governor's appointees or remove DFR, and they can be either one of the governor's appointees or someone who comes as a um, staff person and kind of shares their perspective. I, I, I apologize because I thought I was done saying what I was going to say, but I, I forgot to add what I think is one of the crucial issues here is that although we have... Um, the voting members, we have at the table, we have more voices. Right. And so the, um, the 
three um, retirement system people each have two people, two voices at the table. And mm -hmm. I think voices at the table is as important as votes because um, voices at the table, uh, I, I, I'm thinking of just our committee. When, mm -hmm. when we have five people who actually vote on something, but we have a lot of people here who have voices at the table and they help us get to a place where um, our, where we can vote on it. And so I, I, uh, when I look at this, I look at, um, there are actually six uh, union representative, I mean, yeah, six voices at the table. Well, then there's, you can add that up for, for a lot of other folks too. So no, I mean, they don't. Well, the governor has two alternates as well. Uh, one alternate. One alternate, it's still. Okay. Yeah. So I would support the governor having one vote, one voting member and one alternate. Got it. And then there, so then that would be two voices at the table from the governor. Plus well, three plus actually CFR. because of, yeah. yeah, three. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, I, so I, if I can just add, the governor gets a lot of say the whole time. You know, the governor has a lot of people involved throughout the process as other staff around. And the governor has a lot of power after this, this group does their work. I just don't think the governor needs, I don't know, four voices or however many it would yep. be at this point. It would be, yeah. Okay. Um, Senator Polina? I would basically just, I would agree with what the conversation he just had with what Senator Rahm was saying. I think the governor having one, one appointee plus one alternate seems like plenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Senator Clarkson? So then you'd have eight members and the, and the chair. Yes. I mean, eight voting members. Yes. You'd actually have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 voices at the table plus the chair. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yep. So, you know, I guess just so eight voting members, one non voting member, right? No, well, he's <laughs> voting in a tie. The chair votes in a tie. Yes. Oh, I guess I hadn't taken that on board. Gail has her hand up, which might mean something important for us. Oh, Gail. Okay. Oh, Gail. Thank you. Uh, our attorney, um, Becky, needs to leave at five o'clock. And if we do need an attorney present, she said that she would find coverage for us. So I just wanted to put that out there now since we still have about 20 more minutes. So committee, here's... Um, I'm, I'm concerned about us uh, going late here and coming, I, I'd like us to come to some decision, but is it possible for us to come to some decisions tonight and get them to Becky or whoever the attorney is? Is there any possibility we could meet on Monday to actually vote out when we've seen a nice clean copy of everything we've decided. Any I mean, time I have, on, yeah, I was gonna say I have preferred times, but I would also clear anything on my schedule for this, so. Does anybody, um, Senator Colmer, could you meet? Uh, I, I would hope that we could come up with all of our decisions today, but then allow Becky and whoever <laughs> else the attorney might be to do it and get a clean copy to us so that we can actually vote out what we see as a nice clean copy instead of asking them to stay tonight. And, and I do have an edited version of everything you've done so far. So it, yep. it would just be the membership um, decision making. Yep. Yes, I can meet Monday. I don't know that that advances the calendar though. Well, it, I think that if we can vote it out on Monday, we could, um, uh, if we vote it out today, it's still gonna go on notice on, um, I'll, I'll check with Bloomer, but I think that we can um, probably, and I'm gonna ask if we can um, pending 
entry on the calendar if we can actually take it up. Sure. Senator Polina, could you uh, possibly yeah, meet for yes. just a little bit? Yeah, on yes. Okay, and Senator yep. Clarkson? I uh, could conceivably meet at, at, at uh, like 12, 12.30 to, to 3.30 or 4. Oh, I don't think it would take that long. But I mean, I could meet early afternoon. Yeah. Okay. How about really so early in the morning? Yeah, that's my favorite time. You know that. I'm <laughs> fine with that. So we can I, I can't. I have an. I, I have a something I have to do in <coughs> Lebanon uh, early in the morning. I, I, I'm. Well, I mean, which is fine. You can meet without me. But I, no, I'm not I, back. I, I'm not I, back until ten. No, I'd like us to meet um, all together and. We can set a time, but with that decided, we'll figure out a time later on, but we'll allow Becky to, to do what she needs to do and not to have to try and find somebody to sit in for her right now, okay? Yep. Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Um, all right, so let's go back to our, um, and look what I did. Aww. I did go pick one. It's been raining here all day. Nobody yeah. knows. Oh. It is it is the most beautiful day so really? far here. It is it has been raining for the last 24 hours, it hasn't stopped. It's sunny and it's really blustery and cold enough that you have to have on a sweatshirt when you I love it's my favorite, my favorite weather. Anyway, okay. Enough of that. So Senator Rahm, you are um voting for one governor appoint the only change in here would be one governor's appointee and one alternate mm -hmm. I, I mean just changing it from so he, there's really two appointees but only one vote mm -hmm. yeah okay and senator polina you agree with that yes senator clarkson uh, um well i hate being the deciding factor here but um, I, I'm fine with it. Sadly, I'm fine with it either way. Um, I, I think yeah. it's fine, and yeah. I'm. But I'm well. I, I think it's an it, it's an investment group, and everyone, every Vermonter, should care enormously about how well these investments do. It is on all our shoulders uh, how well this performs. Mm -hmm. So uh, that being said. Um, you know, I so I I just I think everybody <clears throat> has ideally the same interest, and uh, the thing I'm reluctant to give up with the uh, governor's uh, appointees is that they have to be financial experts and independent. Yeah. And it those says that. what it says that I know that's what I'm saying. I'm reluctant oh. to give up a financial expert. So oh. I'm, that's. That's what Keisha is proposing: is that we give up one financial expert. So I guess what I'm I, here's what I'm saying is that the governor gets one appointee; they're a financial expert. They get two; they have the ability to move the entire group in a direction that feels more political than just why, why do why do they need two financial experts? I'm not saying we can't have another financial expert if we if they're chosen by another group, but why we would give the governor two financial experts and two alternates? feels like a lot to me there there aren't two alternates and one alternate. one alternate but also the governor is going to not the governor but the commissioner of uh, uh, financial regulation is one of the members He's and that financial expert a yeah. financial expert as well as is the chair sure yeah as is the chair as is the treasurer yeah. right right so experts everywhere so, uh, so actually, then I would then I would support the one one member of the, the of the governors, and and I would support the uh, that and uh, my yeah my only other concern. And, and now that I know the chair can split votes, that's that's okay. The other thing we have to remember is, and I'll Senator Calmer, I'll get to you in a second. Is that the people that are appointed by the um, Vemers and Beasters and Beezers, those are such bad names. But anyway, um, the people that are appointed by them do not have to necessarily be, they, they can be a financial right. expert also. I mean, right. the, um, right. and my right. guess is that they're going to want to appoint people who are as 
well versed in finance, they they would never appoint me, for example, <laughs> um, to this board. But they because they're going to think very carefully about who they're going to appoint. So, um, Senator, I, I would love to get to Senator Colmar. I just want to say one thing about that too. That's okay with Senator Colmar. Yeah, and sure. Tom has something to say too. Yeah, I see that. I, I hope at some point, you know, everybody would agree it's good to have some financial experts and maybe even a preponderance of financial experts. But as Jeff and others have pointed out, people with other perspectives also make great points about financial mm -hmm. matters, right? We can get ourselves into a world of trouble and global recessions by only listening to financial experts. So I just don't want them to become so paramount in this conversation. We forget other perspectives are valuable. It is interesting because I always said um, standards and poor or whoever they are, are the ones that rate us, and yet they're the ones that got us into the 2008 recession. So, Senator yeah. Collimore and then Tom. Yeah, and I realize we've sort of already, the die is cast as it were, but I just would say for those that are worried about any undue influence from the administration, the current composition, the governor has two, and there are fewer people on the pick board. So he has, or she, has more of an influence now and you know we're we're proposing that it go to 10 with nine votes so i don't know why we wouldn't leave the governor having two um and anyway that's just yeah. I, okay um tom thanks madam chair um i would support the current the way it's written with the two and one for the governor and here's my reason um if you change that it's going to affect the current composition just like Senator Collimore said. So we'd have to address the transition issue differently because he currently has two voting and one, um, one non-voting. The new member you're adding is this uh, Secretary of Financial- uh, uh, The Commissioner- uh, The Commissioner of Financial Regulation. Originally it was the Commissioner of Finance. And so I would prefer if you wanna take one away, that would be where I would look only because it wouldn't affect the transition uh, process, um, and we'd have to get rid of one that's already been appointed by the governor, which I would rather not do <laughs> you know, at this point. The second point is I do think the House, and the way this came about was the House's uh, insistence on having the financial expertise, and we whittled away that from Beamer's members and Beaster's members and Beaster's members through this whole process um, to make sure we had exposure, that we wouldn't exclude uh, uh, like superintendents and, and uh, city city members. Um, so I, I prefer how it's listed, but if you do take one away, I would not touch the, the governor's appointees and I'd look for the new member that you're looking to add on. So thank you. Uh, um, Senator Rahm. So before I allow myself to agree with Tom on this front, I will just start by saying, you know, we were changing the composition material anyway by leaving it at three labor folks and still going to 10 people. And I wouldn't want to say that someone's feelings being heard or not making it through the transition would be the best reason to change the composition in favor of giving less of a voice to the labor folks and more of a voice to the governor's folks. But I will agree that I have said all along, if the governor had two appointees and they wanted to appoint their DFR commissioner, great, you know, but l let's just give them those two appointments and not have DFR on there then. I, yeah, Senator Clarkson. But uh, Tom, the commissioner of financial regulation is a governor appointee. So I think the point, I think if, if you keep the uh, commissioner and one appointee, that that are that is keeps your current two governor appointees, quite frankly. So I think that's that's part of why I'm okay with going with that suggestion because that keeps you with two governor appointees. My point would be more the institutional knowledge from the investment professionals that are the current governor's appointees. Oh, you're, you're talking about the current people, not just yes. the positions. This change would affect the current makeup of the VPIC, which would affect the institutional knowledge of the two members, which do have a significant level of expertise um, on the current board. So I just bring that up as a point. There was a transition I, period, right? Yeah, the okay. transition period, yes. Yeah, I actually, so I, I would say that I, I think that the governor's appointee is their transition under the transition language right now. 
um, they're actually they would actually need to be reappointed as of this June. So, but you're getting rid of a spot. That's why you wouldn't be able to replace one of the governor's positions in an existing spot if you remove it. That's I guess right. Right. I just was bringing up for for everyone's reference of the the reappointment would happen in June. It would just be for one right. one person. Um, and and also I just want to make the point just so this is on your radar that if you change the number of members on this commission. Um, there's also language about um, the uh, how many how many votes you need for certain decisions. And so I think you have to think about um, whether you want to change that as yeah. well. Um, so right now there's five five votes needed to make a, a decision of the committee, but six in the case of setting actuarial assumptions. So you might want to keep that as is, but I just wanted to raise that for you as well. I, I actually like Tom's idea here. And one of the reasons I like it is because my guess is that the, the VPEC board will work with the commissioner of DFR when they need to anyway. And that if, if the original person that was on, appointed uh, was considered by the House was the uh, commissioner of uh, secretary of finance or commissioner of finance and budget and management. I guess um, that that they had some unclarity about which which um, government uh, agency or uh, department was the best represented on here, and so I would. I actually like Tom's uh, suggestion of leaving the two governor appointees and the one alternate and removing the commissioner of DFR. And if the, and, and they, and the commissioner of DFR, when, when um, his or her expertise is required, I'm sure will be asked to, to work with them anyway. So I, I actually like that. That suggestion. I could live with that. Brian? I guess. Um, anybody else have any comments about that? Senator Polina? I think that's OK. That would have been my second choice. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Might have been my first if I'd thought about it, but I wasn't smart enough to think about it. But that's why Tom's joining us on this. So uh, let me just ask everybody else here then, if that, uh, if if we leave the VPIC board the way it is in here, but remove the commissioner of DFR, does that? So I want to hear from everybody here, Beth. Well, Tom and I actually submitted the original um, piece uh, with uh, with uh, Commissioner of Finance. Uh, I would have liked to have kept it that way. Clearly, that's not going to happen. Um, so I, I would agree with Tom that this is the uh, the next best approach. Thank you. Tom, other Tom? Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, Tom Adlenor, Legislative Specialist, VSEA. Um, we support any decision by the committee that would um, move the composition of VPIC toward uh, parity between uh, the representatives originating from the employee groups and those not. So yes, we support this shift as well. Thank you, Mike. We would support this. Thank you, Jeff. In a turnabout, I will support what Tom and Mike just said. Uh, yes, we support it. <laughs> All right. Um, Chris? This is a policy question, Madam Chair, that I defer to the legislature for. I just work here. <laughs> okay, you're, Good right, answer. you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. And Eric probably would say the same thing. Hey, Madam Chair, uh, we do. I, I do, and I emphasize Tom's point about continuity of the folks serving on V now and the institutional knowledge we have there. Okay. So so before I sign off, I will I will make that change, but I just want to double check that you also want to keep the, the votes as they are. So if you have oh. um, eight member eight voting members and nine and, and one tiebreaker, 
um, do you want five? Con so I think you need five concurring votes um, so that you would have a majority, but then do you wanna keep the uh, six votes for the setting actuarial assumptions? Yeah, I think so. No, I see you're shaking your head, Tom. No, that's fine. Oh, uh, oh. It just makes it a little super majority, but it'll be fine. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. Is everybody okay with leaving the numbers as they are? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Okay, let's move to the task force. So um, we, I went through my notes and I have about 30 different um, suggestions for compositions for the task force. And I am going to throw mine out right now. I think I did it earlier. Two house, and I know this gives us 13 members, but two house, two Senate, two governor, two VSEA, one VTA, and three NEA. And um, I don't know if Tom and Mike, you were with us when I justified this by saying that that gives the uh, two, two boards equal number because while VSEA and VTA are uh, separate bargaining units, they're part of the same um, board or whatever that's called. So that that's my suggestion and then the treasurer. So. Well, as I mentioned before, um, if you set it up that way, which is almost there, um, that leaves seven people who are non-beneficiaries, mm -hmm. put it that way, and six people who are. So mm -hmm. the, the, the balance is, would be on the side of the non-beneficiary. So I would prefer to see it. I, I would actually suggest the same thing we were considering in the last conversation about the commission, that the governor get one vote or one person. Um, and that way it would be six and six beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries. I agree. <clears throat> Senator Clarkson? Oh. Are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I support this. I also was playing around with thinking about going back to three house, three Senate and the director of retirement and uh, as a non-voting member. And uh, I was sort of thinking about that too. In addition to all the other people or? No, no. Oh, just that. <laughs> okay. Three house, three Senate, one director of retirement who doesn't vote, who's a non-voting member, uh, three NEA, two VSEA and one trooper. And no governor appointees? No. And no treasurer. No treasurer. Yeah, the, the director of retirement you want yeah. on here, but I think we heard from the treasurer <laughs> that um, it would, while the director of retirement would certainly weigh in that there during this time period of time is her busiest time of the year and she simply would not be able to to do it. I think that's what we heard. Yeah, I think that if, if we were to do that uh, in her her um, uh, her designee, I'd probably end up a Michael anyways. Um, oh, that's right. I do remember that. It, it's, right. it's very difficult. I do want to point out, although I, you know, I do see myself as um, um, uh, somewhat independent and I actually um, uh, that I am a member of the system um, because I, while I have the opportunity as an exempt employee to to participate in a defined contribution plan, um, I believe the DB plans are the best place to go, and that's why I'm there. Right. So, well, can I ask the treasurer? I mean, let's say people saw you as like you play this interesting role. If mm -hmm. you're the thirteenth member, does that sit well with you? I mean, this could get sure. pretty. Intense, so, so you know, I, um, I guess what I would say here is that you know, two, two, you've got two legislative, two House, two Senate, 
um, then I would uh, uh, look at uh, the same thing, reducing the governors by one, but I would also think that they need to have real skin in the game. And what I would suggest is that it would be the secretary of administration uh, or her designee. I think it's important to recognize that a senior member of the staff, because if you appoint somebody from, from another, from the community, and I think there's obviously advantages to that, you need someone that is in contact and working with this uh, and uh, assigned to the governor's staff some, you know, and has enough um, um, uh, influence on the process um, because uh, ultimately the governor needs to have skin in the game as well. You know, we've talked about that. This is, as I said earlier, that this is, whoops, uh, turn that off. Um, this is the, uh, I owe you some uh, dinner at Sarducci's, um, uh, yeah. Senator Wright, I think. Oh, yes. I think that's the rule if the phone goes off. It is the rule. It is the rule. I owe, I owe you that. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I think that um, you folks, as I said earlier, are the creator and the owner. So I, I, I see that, you know, there has to be a lead from the, from, the, uh, from the legislature. And I would again recommend that the co-chairs be one from the Senate and one from the House. Uh, but you do need the treasurer's office on there and you do need the governor's office on there. And again, I think that it has to be someone that has the, uh, um, uh, is, is part of the administration because ultimately the administration is going to have to weigh in on this. And yeah. uh, I think that frankly, the governors, all of us represent the taxpayers. That's why they elect you. Uh, that's why they elect me. And that's why they elect the governor. And uh, um, I do think that this gets to equal members and uh, I, I would, um, I would uh, think that this is a good way to go. Um, and, uh, and thank you folks for thinking about this. I think that equity um, with, with the unions is extraordinarily important on this committee. You know, when we started our process, we met with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of folks um, uh, because we wanted the, them to be involved in this. And I think that this is the way to go uh, one way or the other. Uh, getting, and the other thing is the larger it gets, the harder it is to do things, so. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a balance. So you, you're, what you're suggesting here is two House, two Senate, and the, specifically the Secretary of Administration or designee, so that there's, yes. it isn't just a governor's appointee from, from wherever. Yeah. From, from yeah. Place. yeah. Because if that. I, yeah. You're, sorry. You're, you're right. You're right. It does um, have to be somebody who represents the administration, not just who is yeah. appointed by the administration. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a great point, Beth. Um, yeah. That they need, the governor's oh. office really needs skin in the game. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think yeah. that, that that's a, a very good suggestion. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be really frank. I think that I'm, I worry about 50 50, just I worry about, you know, a stalemate vote. And I, and I worry about that. So what do we do if we end up, you know, it just that the an even number is just a concern. That's all. I I cannot for Senator Ram. I'll call on you in a, just I know, a second. You, here, I, but I cannot for yeah. the life of me think that four legislators would always be of the same mind. Oh, or that or that <laughs> six. Um, representatives from the VSEA and the NEA and the VTA would always be of the same mind. I, I, I just, I am not worried about a stalemate vote here because I, I don't think, I think everybody is going to be going into this with, with um, the best interests in mind of the participants and the state itself. So I, Good. Uh, and, and those four House and Senate members, have you ever seen four House and Senate members that are all of the same mind always? No. No, of course not. No. Look, look at the five of us. Right. Yes. So I, I actually think that's a, an interesting for, uh, proposal. Senator Colomar? You know, I didn't mean to jump ahead of uh, Senator Rahm, but I, I'm trying to follow the, the treasurer's plan. So two, two, the Secretary of Administration, the Treasurer's Office, and who else? And the, the six labor members that we've been talking Two about. Two VSEA, one VTA, and three NEA. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Should be 12. No. No. Yeah. I'm confused. 12. 
So are you saying no governor appointees? It should be 12. No, the secretary of administration. Well, you're right, right. That, the secretary of administration, but that's all from the administration. And the governor gets an additional one as well? No. Then I don't come up with 12. Well, two House. Yeah. Two, two Senate. Senate. Yeah. Secretary of Administration. That's five. Yeah. Two VSEA. Yep. One VTA. Three yep. NEA. Yep. That's six. The Treasurer. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, twelve. Twelve. Well, I originally, I think earlier, supported your position, Madam Chair. Um, I think I still do. I, I that was actually, the one with 13. Yeah. I, I would, um, I, I could go with this or I could go with the Secretary of Administration and another appointee by the governor, but I think that that's, um, that there's going to be uh, that the, I am not, I'm not concerned about a stalemate. I am concerned that the, this, the process here is so important that if there is a feeling that um, in any way that it is stacked against the participants, that there is not going to be the kind of um, energetic buy-in that there needs to be to come to this conclusion. And, and, and because I think that the, uh, we've made, we will make sure that the two, um, the four House and Senate people are not, the two from each body are not of the same party. I think it's pretty clear that there will probably be um, at least two Republicans on here, and um, that that and and so I, I feel comfortable that in this case, and we're talking about a Republican governor and two Republicans on the committee. I mean that that's going to be a given, I believe. So. I, I think that there will be um, the ability for the governor to have some voice in here without necessarily having that vote. That may have been a too much of a political statement, but I I do think it's true. Senator Colomar? Yeah, no, I think you're right, Madam Chair, and I appreciate your, your honesty and openness. I think that's exactly right. Um, so the only difference between what you originally proposed today and what the latest suggestion is the specificity of one of the governors, well, appointees, if you will, because it'll be the, the Secretary of Administration. The, the, that the governor would have one, one awesome. voice there, uh, well, have one voting voice yeah. um, and, and as part of the administration. But, but in fact, I think it's going to be very clear that there has to be that the governor will have influence in other ways. All sorts of people have influences in other ways. I mean, right, they, right. They will hopefully this group will hear from a, a whole range of interests and expertise. I mean, they'll have influence left, right, and center. I I am okay with um, Beth's suggestion. Could I? I don't want to sound dense, but I just want to go through the numbers one more time so I know what we're talking about. Okay. Two from the House, two from the Senate, Secretary of Administration, three from the NEA, three from the VSEA. No, one from the VSEA, two, two from, from the VSEA, two from VSEA. And, and the Treasurer? One and one, one from VTA. Okay, I, I was combining VSEA and VTA. Okay. No, no, Mike, Mike just gave you the death stare. <laughs> and there's so one from the governor, too. Huh? Yes. No, this, the governor is only represented by the Secretary of Administration. Is that what we're saying? No. Or some legislators, yeah. potentially. If, well, it, it, you know, we don't know who will be appointed right. by the legislature. So, it, it Right, but the governor is going to, in terms of the administration, the governor's all, the executive the branch. Right. Secretary, Secretary of Administration is it. 
That's oh. that's suggestion. That okay. gives us. Then I was misunderstanding because I thought when I said your original proposal today, Madam Chair. Yeah. Two 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 treasurer yep. three two one, and that the only difference now would be that one of the two from the governor would be in fact the secretary of administration, but that would still leave one other one. Actually, that is that was my original proposal was two for the governor, but I think that um, I, I think that uh, the having the secretary of administration there is a pretty powerful voice. And um, and I think that 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 voice it, it really carries the weight of the executive branch and of the governor and and I did listen to um, Beth's um, uh, justification for that in that um, if this isn't seen as balanced that there the energetic um, uh, the energy going into this might be less than uh, we hope for if if there's a feeling that it's stacked against the participants. And so uh, that I, that's why I could go along with the just the secretary of administration from the governor's office here. And I think that that is a very powerful voice. And, and it is true what Beth says that it's the legislature really is that is going to make the decisions here and that has to own this and so having four legislators on here makes sense to me because we better be behind whatever comes out of this here 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 i agree that's that's uh senator collimore why i you are right my initial one was two but I think that um, Beth's statement, and I think that um, we heard before from the unions that the process here is so important, and the 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 perception that it's that it's really balanced. And and I, as I said, I these two House and two Senate members, we don't know who they might be. They might be. Um, Right, we, we don't know who they'll be. People who hate unions or they might be um, union members. I mean, not of these unions, but so we don't know who they'll be. Uh, so we don't know where they're going to kind of politically line up. So I'm, I'm fine with Beth's suggestion to have the one, and I know the governor would like to have two, but I think that the secretary of administration is a very powerful voice the only other thing which I put out, but nobody nibbled at at all. So I'm just going to be willing to put it out again, which is to uh, if, if Brian, if we were to consider that, that we would then make one of uh, those three people a non voting member, and then you'd have balance on the vote. That's just an idea. So if you had. What? What? One of which three people? So if you, yeah. So if you had uh, the secretary of administration and a governor's appointee and the treasurer, one of them would be non-voting, and then you'd have nine. What well, you'd keep? Uh, you'd have nine people, nine voices, but only uh, only eight votes. You'd have balanced votes. It's just an idea to kind of. Oh, play with this a little bit. I see what you're saying. So that the governor would have um, the governor an alternate, have two. basically yeah. an alternate on there who would be a voice at the table, but not a vote. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then that keeps, that addresses uh, Brian's concern or you know, anyway, it's, it, and it, it depends on who you'd want to make not have the vote. But I mean, it's just an idea. It was just so that you'd, anyway, oh. if you wanted to do that. I, I, I think I, that, I, I, could, I, I think that, you know, there will be many, many, many voices at the table here. I don't think, I agree. when I think I, about it, I'm not sure. If I, I'm looking at my screen right now and there are one, two, three, four, there are 12 people here. And there really, there are only five votes here. 
but there are 12 voices at the table. And those voices, I think, have been very instrumental in helping us to, and, and so when this committee meets, whether it's 11 members or 12 members, they are going to have other voices at the table. They are going to be talking to, to tons of people out there. I mean, they'd better, if, if these nine people or 12 people think that they're gonna solve this on their own, they're crazy. Right, we they're know they're gonna be talking to all kinds of experts and to Tom and to Chris and to uh, DFR and to human resources and they're going to be talking to all those people to try to come to the best solution here. So I'm, I'm not concerned about adding, an, uh, when I think about it, I like your suggestion, but I don't think it makes any sense because there will always be many, many more voices. <laughs> Just trying to be creative and think I know. of another option. Yep. No, I appreciate that. To, to go to just so you know, Al, just so you know, Allison, it was my third choice. I actually wrote down in my notes before we went, before we came back in, that one option would be to make one of them non-voting. So thank you, Anthony. <laughs> and I do appreciate your attempt, um, Senator Clarkson, to uh, you know, at least consider my uh, position. Um, and I guess I find myself in the rather familiar position of a four to one <laughs> vote here, which is fine. Um, I don't think it'll keep me from voting uh, against the bill, but I, I do want to make it clear. I, I still think, it, because I think, Madam Chair, you raise a good point. If you take a look at the four legislators, you could easily say two of them are going to go one way and two of them are going to go the other way. And so then we've got five labor representatives and possibly seven votes if you if you take the uh, the two Democrat, progressive, whatever. Um, so, you know what I mean? It just... I, I still feel that the governor should have that extra voice. Uh, but as I said, I, it's not going to prevent me from uh, not voting for the bill. May I just say, yep. I just I, I just have to say that I don't I think there's a common purpose, which is a sustainable pensions uh, a sustainable pension system that benefits our workers and our state going into the future. I think everybody should have that same goal. So I would hope that was not a political thing. I mean, I think all of us want a sustainable pension system. We, it's, it's really important. It's important to our, 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 our credit rating around the state. I mean, it's a, important to everything. It's important to our taxpayers. They, you know, it's important to our beneficiaries. I, I think you know, and, and the we, they piece about who who's a participant and who isn't, we're all participants, we're all taxpayers. We all support the system. We all care that it's healthy. So I, I, I just don't see this as a political, uh, you know, where it, that there's any sort of position politically actually. And I would hope that there wouldn't be. I well, would hope that we all would be wanting the same thing. How we get there is gonna be of course the robust conversation. But I would really hope that that piece was not political and that we all hopefully want the same thing. I agree. But I wasn't the one that brought up the balance issue. Um, right. That was brought up by the by the labor unions. And yeah. so I'm trying to respond to that while yeah. being fair to the administration as well. That's all. Yeah. Senator Rahm. So I just want to say, you know, maybe... I, I think there are very few decisions where if we just said, let's get a room of financial experts together and they can solve it, you know, and we, and we would be satisfied with the outcome. No offense, Tom. Um, you know, I think there are very few decisions that, that are, that are that nature. We have loaded this task force up with a lot of big questions and a lot of things that are bigger than just, is this pension fund sustainable? And Frankly, we're not all in the position of being told you have to work longer in a prison or doing some backbreaking work or teaching after you're burnt out. You know, we're not all in that position. Those are other questions that this group is being asked to consider where it really matters to have labor voices saying that are diverse, right? Because they don't all have the same job and they don't all have the same, and an elementary school teacher is different than a high school teacher you know, is different than someone who works in agriculture. So, you know, these are really non-monolithic perspectives that all need to be at the table for these big questions we're asking. Right. 
I think they will be. I, I think you're right. I think that if you really look at this, there are probably 12 different perspectives on almost any issue that's going to be presented. Because and because I don't know who will like who um, NEA will appoint to this or who VSEA will appoint to it. it um, the VTA will probably appoint somebody who represents the troopers, but the VSEA could appoint somebody from corrections and somebody from um, who, who doesn't work in such a, a high stress situation. I mean, it, you're right, you're right. There will be many different perspectives. Yeah. Well, that's a given. It's 12 different Vermonters, so that's a given. Right. Okay, committee. Um, can I? I'm going to ask other people now to weigh in on on the uh, this proposal that was given to us by the the treasurer, which is two House, two Senate, the Secretary of Administration or designee, two VSEA, one VTA, three NEA, and the treasurer. So, can I hear from? people um who wants to I'll go guys, first. jeff i see you unmuted yourself yeah uh thank you uh, madam chair and thank you committee this has been uh it's it's a much improved work and i appreciate the effort significantly as to this particular item i support the treasurer's move here i think that we we've, we've been calling senator collimore pointed out for balance for years uh before i worked at vermont EA, i represented erisa plans which are required to have balance, uh, multi-employer plans have balance by law. And, and you rarely, if ever have, you know, really divided questions, you really, you know, because everybody, as you pointed out, Senator Clarkson, they're trying to, they want a plan that's here today as well as tomorrow. And I will point out that it was a teacher member in the late nineties who was really sounded the alarm about the underfunding back then and filed a lawsuit. So it was a teacher member of the board who really pointed out the underfunding issue. And so that was, um, you know, that, that was, so I, I firmly believe that this balance on this task force is really important to achieve. And I, I thank the treasurer for the suggestion and I support it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I wanna thank you, the members of the committee and treasurer Pierce um, for really highlighting the importance of balance in this discussion. We would certainly support this proposal as it accomplishes a balance between voting members of the uh, who are appoint who are appointees uh, who are members of the three affected labor unions and those who are not. We think that's really essential. And and I will just say quickly to a point that Senator Clarkson had raised earlier about the possibility of 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 stalemate and that being a concern. I think that as you said, Madam Chair. A uh, balanced composition actually, perhaps counterintuitively, lends itself best to accomplishing a real constructive, productive conversation uh, as opposed to a, a system that would be set up in such a way where uh, there might be a perception of a lack of balance either way. And I'll just say our members are eager to have those productive conversations. They have experience having those conversations in a balance set up through their years of experience in the collective bargaining process. I know members of this committee will have experienced that, that equal balance in their roles in committees of conference in the past. And we really do think that is the thing that is most likely to yield what Senator Clarkson and other members of the committee had said quite correctly that we and everyone else wants, which is a productive and a stable pension system going forward. So we would support such a balanced approach. Thank you. I got a little distracted there by uh, Steve's t-shirt. Oh, has he joined us? <laughs> Maybe he heard what we were working on. <laughs> and he went out quickly and had a t-shirt made. <laughs> well, he's been vaccinated. He's spent all this time, you know. Oh, yay. Oh, that's nice. Good. Maybe all they right. gave him that t-shirt to wear. I'm going to have Mike weigh in. Um, this makes it easy for me. I, I agree with Jeff and Tom and the points they made. Um, the most important thing is that going into this task force and starting this work, the state employees and teachers have confidence in the process that's laid out to get to the end point. And the balance you're suggesting accomplishes that, so we support it. 
Um, Beth, we know what you think since it was your proposal to begin with. Well, um, she's maybe had time to rethink it. You still support your own idea? <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom Galanka, do you want to weigh in here? Uh, I'll just say I support I support the treasurer in this effort. And although VPIC isn't uh, named in this task force, we do stand ready and willing to help in any way we can, you know, through this process. So, thank you for your efforts here. Thank you. Now, I will ask um, one more question about the this board. So. Currently in the bill, it says that the members from the legislature shall not be direct or indirect beneficiaries of either of the two retirement systems. Do we do we continue to support that? Ab absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Everybody. Okay. And it also says that the members appointed to that the other members so. That would be um, the um, F and H. Who are F and H? Oh, the um, I have to look. Who are uh, the the any the members appointed by the unions? The, the those six members shall not currently be currently serving as a legislator or the spouse or partner of an individual currently serving as a legislator. Yes, I support that too. Fine. Senator Polina? Sure, sure. Senator Rahm? That's fine. And there's a transition period, I think, for the person yeah. who would affect most personally. Well, this there's no transition here because this is a brand this is new task, task force. This is the task force. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I went right back to feet yeah. So evening. Yep. So it does is everybody fine with those? Um, yes. Constraints. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so shall we? Um, I, I know that uh, Senator Colomore, that you disagree with this um, position, but does is everybody else in agreement with the with the per, treasurer's proposal? Yes, I am. Okay, I think we have it. And we didn't so, even have to pull out the PJs. I know, or our dinner, even. But it is time for a glass of wine. Sure. So oh, I guess, yeah. A little. I I will, I will say that um, I I will uh, get this information to Becky, and if we could just meet for a few minutes on Monday to make to get a clean copy and and um, have a vote on it. Does that, can we do that? And yep. what time is best? We need to make sure that the five of us and Gail and, um, and Becky won't have to be with us because she'll have a clean copy to us, but what time should we try to plan on? I, what? Senator yeah. Colomar? I know that won't work. I said 6.30 in the morning. Okay, great. I have no problem with that. Uh, 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 that is so not, I mean, <laughs> Brian knows. Are you kidding? I, I am not a fan of 6.30, okay? Publicly, I am a nighttime owl. So <laughs> you'll still be up by 6.30. Oh, well, that's, you know, if we met at 12.30, I'd be fine. 12.30, a, yeah. a, a, I'd be fine. Um, I would, uh, I'm, I'm kind of tough on Monday until uh, 1130 or 1145, but I could do any time after that. And I vote for three o'clock. It's the one time I wouldn't have to move anything, <laughs> but I can also move things. So from like three to four? Oh, uh, I doubt we need a no, whole hour. We could schedule day. it. Huh? That ruins a whole day. Some of us work on Mondays and need to do other oh, things. Yeah, working. I mean, the work. problem is that most of us book things on Monday for because it's the one day you have to book all the meetings that you need to do in your, you know. So I've got meetings on, nine to noon on Monday. So afternoon works better for me. So how about Brian if we did it, tagged it on to lunch and did it like from from one to two, and Keisha, would it, would that be a difficult one for you to move? One, one to two is probably the hardest one for me to move. Okay. What about noon? 
do it during lunch so we could all have lunch together? Well, I'm not exactly expecting an hour either. No, no I'm not noon, either. Noon to two involves work of mine that involves other people, other city officials and people that are hard to reschedule around. How about 5 p.m.? I've, I've got a meeting at 5, Dad, I can't do that. How long does your meeting at 5 last? It will last an hour or an hour and a half. 4.30. Or 4, 4 to 5 I could do. Let's do 4.30. I doubt if it'll take us more than half an hour. Okay. Does 4.30 work? Yes. Only if it doesn't take more than half an hour. I, I can't, if we can refrain from um, getting back into the debate on anything, I think that all we need to do is we'll have a clean copy and have a vote. If that sounds works. good. 430. Yep. Okay. Madam so, Chair. Yes. May I ask a uh, favor? Could you send that to the witnesses as well? Um, no. Just, no. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I'm, not looking I'm for sorry, Beth. We will make sure that it is sent to everybody as soon as it's there is a clean copy. That's and what that I'm asking. Post, and that it's also posted. Sure. I just want to make sure that in case there's a technical something, an and or an or, that we take care of it. We, I absolutely. And I'm sorry. I'm I said, for more I'm sorry. I'm looking I said, for no. more debate. Believe I'm me. I'm getting a little punchy here, but um, uh, yes. We are, but this bill, this bill is on a journey. And this is, Agreed. This Agreed. Is a one stop. There'll be plenty of time for more input. Sure. No, there. Oh, yes. <laughs> in conference. Yes, oh, yeah, not here. So just in case uh, we don't have our usual cast of characters with us on Monday, um, I just want to um, thank everybody for your really committed and um, uh, uh, flexibility here in working through this, this bill. This has been, um, this is a really hard issue to deal with and it affects so many lives and, and the um, finances of the state, the, the health of the state. So I think that Personally, I just want to thank everybody for your involvement here. And Tom and Chris and Beth, you've been just amazing. And the um, VTA and the VSEA and the NEA have been really helpful and worked. I, I think it's been a good process. And um, I'm, I'm proud of everybody for the work we've done. And committee members for hanging in there and for putting up with my tyrant um, attitude sometimes. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it Yes, that. Senator Colomar. Thank you, Madam Chair. So even though, again, I'm in my familiar position of the underdog here, just to show you that uh, there's no harm felt here and I'm in good spirits. I did look this up. I don't know whether this will help Senator Rom later, but the term half mask is preferred by dictionaries at sea Half staff is more appropriate on land. Right. right. Thank you. Thank that, you. I, I, that's great. I, that that confirms sort of the gut feeling I had about it. That's great. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Okay. So our eyes, our eyes are now at half staff. <laughs> half lid. Okay, okay so, so I Anybody else have anything they need to share right now or want to? Please. No, no. who's cooking dinner?